ASMR. Today we're going to be doing another comic book haul, but I want to start off and just dedicate today's episode to Kevin Conroy, the Batman. Uh, yesterday it was announced that uh, he passed away, and uh, I was fortunate enough to meet Kevin actually at the first con I ever went to, which was uh, C2E2 in Chicago. And uh, I was really lucky that I got to meet him. So here's his signature here. And uh, basically, whenever I met him, um, it was right after I had accidentally cut Jim Lee's line for signings. And I had a VIP pass and stuff like that. But basically, the minion, since I had a VIP thing, they let me meet Kevin, even though uh, the line was capped. So I was the last person who got to talk to him on that Saturday. But, um, yeah, so I got up there and I told him, Kevin, you have spent more time with Batman than any other actor, whether Keaton or Bale or whoever. Uh, in my opinion, he is the greatest Batman. He's spent decades with the character, and he is the character we hear. He is the voice we hear when we read the comics. And so even though he's passed on and cannot voice any more lines in our heads when we read the books, it's still going to be Kevin who we hear. So thank you so much, Kevin, for your talent and your passion. And um, we pray for you and your family or send care or whatever we want to do. So thank you, Kevin. So today's haul is really cool. I've got a ton of fun stuff. I've got some really neat collectibles too, so we'll split it up as usual. Kind of a half and half, but this is technically, we've got two boxes in, you know, the bag for my recent uh, pickup. So we'll start with a uh, bad idea kicked off again. So this is Orc Island number one. And I just love, of course, the spot gloss on the mat. It is really cool. I love the font on the cover too. It's really neat. Although I know it's been people been using it a bit more now. But yeah, bad idea is just up. It's more or less like it's a way to commit to alternative storylines without as many as there are for like image and stuff like that. As I've said in the past, like I really like how image is kind of so random and diverse and things like that but there's just so many you know but yeah so I committed to bad idea because they are uh, it's a more limited line and it's a it's limited in shops too there's only I believe 150 shops that are allowed to sell the books and so it's only one per uh, customer as well so uh, discourages flippers and stuff like that so but yeah, it's a little gimmicky and stuff like that, but I'm just fortunate enough that I live near uh, where there's a shop that sells them. So naturally, I want to be a part of that. So, but yeah, I just like, you know, the creativity and just kind of the, the talent that goes into these books. So I'm seeing if there's a backup in here. Nah, it doesn't look like there is. Uh, yeah, there is. It looks like there's kind of like a Noah's Ark satire thing in here which I don't really care for that too much I don't know if many of you know but I've, no I've said it before that um, I'm a Christian so but I'm not a judgmental Christian like you know I love and care for everyone and all that good stuff and then here's the second one I won't show off the insides but look at that cover too it's so cool see yeah so it just continues on same interior artist and then there's a different backup in here so something else Escape from Wyoming from Bad Idea as well. Yeah, and I don't know anything. 
thinking about any of these other than, you know, they're just random stories. Most of them are usually like pretty futuristic and stuff. I don't think I've, I'm trying to remember any that were kind of like, well, I guess there's been a few that have been period pieces, but. Backup is called Powder Day. It's a black and white. Looks like um, uh, it almost looks like the Hero Trade type tone to it. I don't know if you can hear downstairs. My cats have the zoomies right now, so. If you hear anything and you're like, what is that? That's what that is. So. Uh, next is Spider-Man number two. So this is the offshoot book by Slot and Bagley, promising the end of the Spider-Verse. Looks like all of our buddies have been somewhat corrupted here. We can see them all with little, um, I forget what those are called now, but you know, the little fangs or whatever. But yeah, it should be a fun read. Like I said, it wasn't initially on my poll list, but it's important enough. And like I said, these go to my kid afterwards and he loves like into the spider verse and all that type of stuff. So. And then we have Judgment Day Omega, number one. So this is like a follow-up. It's been fine. Like I said, I was annoyed that, you know, the Celestial deemed um, Captain America is, you know, unworthy or whatever. But then Captain America got resurrected anyway. So ha-ha jokes on him. But, yeah, I don't know. You know, I loved the early days of the Marvel big events, like, you know, the Secret War, um, and the, the Civil War stuff and all that, and Planet Hulk, those were all great. But I really just fell off with interest around the original Sin uh, event. And at this point, it's just like, okay, anytime they're just like, we promise nothing will be the same. It's like, okay, great. Well, you're just going to change it in six months anyway and tie it into 50 books. But it's like that with anything. But I definitely feel like Marvel goes more all in than DC. DC has a big event and then it's like all this crazy stuff happens and then like it's barely even acknowledged in the regular ongoing books. At least to me it seems. So next we have Amazing Spider-Man 13. And yeah, I have been loving Amazing Spider-Man. So we've got the Hobgoblin, and now we've got two Hobgoblins. So Spidey's really in a lot of trouble now. Osborne is currently like Peter's boss. Peter has fallen on hard times. So he's helped him and he made like kind of like a almost a goblin hybrid spider suit for him. So he's got a glider now as well. And as we all know, you know, it's already been promoted or whatever that there's going to be the golden goblin, which I'm sure is going to be Norman, you know, taking on another goblin tote, totem, I believe. Now, this is one that's exciting me right here. Paul Dano, the actor who plays the Riddler in the Batman movie. He has written, I think it's going to be three books total about the Riddler, year one, and we have cover 
covers by Bill Sienkiewicz. And I don't think I know this artist here, Stephen Subic. But yeah, this just looks like it's going to be like a dark, gritty, you know, it's very much in vain with how the movie was, which I enjoyed. Although I'm surprised the coloring here is kind of lighter, although it is muted, I guess. Not very much shadow is what I mean, you know. But maybe that's more like a setup. its moments. Look at this here. See, that's cool. That's the tone I was expecting, but that's not throughout. I flipped through it. It's mostly light in that one, so that's kind of odd. Next, we have Batman Fortress number six. He's uh, teaming up with Aqua Lad, I believe. I can't ever remember that guy's name. So yeah, Batman's more or less kind of got a random assortment of people to help him take on this alien invasion um, that seemingly has Superman captured. Yeah, I think this is going to go to eight parts maybe, or twelve, I don't know. Yeah, I was definitely liking the setup, but I'm ready for some, some real action with it now. Looks like they're in the Fortress of Solitude there. And then I got the Action Comics, the normal cover, uh, 1048. Just liking these old covers that look like the um, George Reeves Superman. So my regular shop always pulls the variants because they know I like them. But I, on this run, the common covers are actually what I prefer. And then I was able to get the Jim Lee cover for the um, Gotham Knights series, which I on the rack I thought it was going to connect. So I thought the first issue was this, and then the second issue's cover was gonna be this, but now it's the full cover is the Jim Lee double page spread. So this was the promotional art they used on DC Fandom, what, I guess two years ago now, for the game. So it's pretty cool, and I'm gonna leave it in there. So, so next I'll show off uh, Black Box number one, and then we'll go to, um, and then we'll go to the collectibles. All right, so we have the Death of Superman 30th Anniversary. So this is pretty cool. Like I said, Death of Superman was pretty pivotal for me, even though he wasn't my favorite hero. Uh, he was my brother's favorite hero, so we really saw a lot of the impact of that in our house. And then I was experiencing it all as, as a seven-year-old, you know, so I was like, man, they killed, like, the most powerful superhero. That's crazy, you know. And then, of course, all the Reign of the Superman stuff that spiraled out of it. And then there's more cover on the back, but I can't fit it all in frame. But this is actually all brand new material in the vein of that story. So I don't know how well I can show it with the cover like that. I'll, I'll get to the middle of it maybe and show a bit. I don't know. Let's see. So I think there's three different stories in here, if I remember. And then we see his son somehow in this particular one. Maybe he's doing like, I might be like a memory sort of, you know, the little capsule memory thing. 
uh, so this might be a different, no, this is totally a different artist, but I'm trying to figure out if it's a different store, because the front I could have sworn showed like, yeah, yeah, so this is Dan Jurgens doing this one, so that's pretty cool. Oh, this is still him all the way through here. I guess it was uh, crazy. Those last few pages looked um, different to me. I don't know. But yeah, so then here's another story here. This one's by Ordway and Grummet. So yeah, they got a lot of the um, a lot of the old school team together from that time. So this just looks like a greatest hits from those days of Superman. And then, let's see. Looks like another one by Butch Guys here. Who was doing action comics at the time. Yeah, Roger Stern, Butch Guys. So it looks like they got all the old band back together from that time to work on stories. so funny at the time I didn't care for Butch's style but I really like it now I guess it was like too like grounded looking for me when I was a kid but I like it a lot now and then we have a John Bogdanov and Louise Simonson story in the back too Although his style doesn't look as squared off as it normally was back in the day. Or it looks a bit more rounded, so that just could be his style. Just kind of slightly evolved there. You can still tell it's him, though, for sure. But, yeah, and then I'm sure you saw throughout the book is all sorts of, like, little, um, little pin-up posters here. So this is really cool. Now look at that, it's great. This one here. And then, yeah, here's that Bill Sienkiewicz one. into you know the 
the classic story, which is is great. I loved all the like the splash pages and stuff. It made it fast to read, which I remember being annoyed by that. But these are just some great images, you know. Just to kind of be confronted with the scope of the battle, you know. It's awesome. and seeing the, like, the standalone line work and all that. So, really nice. Then we have Batman number 129. The Del Auto cover. still continuing on with the fail-safe storyline. It's more or less a robo-Batman. That is his contingency for everything. So it was even taking out members of the League trying to help him. And then Batman went ahead and enacted his Zurin L persona, which it looks like he's back now. trying to protect his mental state. But yet, it lured all the Justice League to a certain spot that Batman had already rigged to be, like, destructive to the League and all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, it's been interesting. I wouldn't say it's like my favorite story or anything, but it's entertaining, you know. Just kind of being faced with my collection a lot recently and looking at what's, you know, getting limited on space and being like, is this run something I'm going to look back on and be glad that I kept or am I just going to be annoyed and not have space to add and things like that, so... But it's not too bad. It has enough going for it, you know. At this point, now, like, the Court of Owls is definitely, like, the most, you know, 
essential Batman thing to keep for the current years. The other stuff's been enjoyable, but... So then we have Batman versus Robin, number three. And, yeah, that demon dude is just going after everyone within the Bat family circle. And it's so weird, too, because Batman has Alfred with him. I'm not sure why. He just suddenly showed up inexplicably, which he's supposed to be dead. So, I mean, if Alfred comes back, you know, permanently, that's great. I love the character of Alfred. But it'll be interesting to see if it's just literally like, oh, well, you know, it's obviously like a Lazarus Pit resurrection sort of thing or a trade-off, you know. I'll resurrect Alfred so you can be, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Possessed, yeah, by the, the demon guy. But, yeah, no, this has been good. I've been enjoying this. Art's good and everything. This series look like looks like it's pulling back on the thread of the multiple jokers. Um, we saw a body that seemingly was killed, and then when they took it, the bag off the head, it was the Joker, but there's already a Joker walking around. So we're like, oh man, this was one of the other three, and it's been deemed that it's like immortal because we saw it get shot. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. Or even the why behind it, you know. And then there should be a secondary in here, I believe. something here. Then we have Dark Crisis, crisis on Infinite Earth number six. This is a pretty cool cover. was lucky that they still had one on the shelf. I could have sworn that I marked this one for pre-order, but wasn't in there. The normal cover was, but not this one. So, yeah, as I've said, all of these events just kind of really don't amount to much to me. Yeah, they could do the craziest thing in them, but then you're just like, okay, and... <laughs> The effect of them has, has worn off on me, you know. But the art's good, the talent's good on them. some collectibles. So first off, I got this really fun Juggernaut 3 liter soda. This sucker is huge. To, um, put it in retrospect, here is a normal sized soda next to it. It's 
big. It's a, it's a literal three liter bottle with a toy in there. So this is the juggernaut one. And they're really hard to open. You've got to put in the tabs and stuff. And there's a big plastic thing that you have to break open off of this, which I ripped part of the label, unfortunately. But yeah, it opens from the bottom. The top does not unscrew. There is a cool little Funko crown on there. But yeah, so here's the figure inside. And this is the common. And what's funny is it's got the plastic that should be on the chase. The chase has where the helmet is busted here. And you can see the head. But regardless, I love the fact that it's like, you know, the helmet and the head underneath are two separate pieces. Rather than just doing like a, a cheap paint on that. And so. And it's heavy too. It's a nice solid piece. It looks really great. Especially, and if you put like your other... Your other soda figure would like be about to hear on them. So great because it's a huge figure, you know. And then even the pog is bigger too. It's like a disc instead of the smaller pog. So they're a bit pricier. These are forty. The regular sodas are fifteen. But yeah, I couldn't say no to Juggernaut. Come on. And then I got this random <laughs> GI Joe figure here. So there is a YouTube video, I'll leave a link to, this is probably 20 or something years old now, where they have dubbed over G.I. Joe bits. And so Roadblock in there, they've given them some weird voice, and he like jumps out of nowhere, and there's like some kids trying to jump over a downed power line. And he's like, who wants a body massage? And he's like singing to himself and stuff. It's really stupid, but what's funny is for years I had no clue that it was a video. I had some friends who would like always say the line to each other on the bus and I just thought it was hilarious but I had no clue it was actually from something. But someone referenced it on a live stream like four years ago and led me to the source of it. I was like, holy crap, this is what they were talking about. So, so yeah, it's this body massage and then on the back it describes that whole scenario about the kids jumping over the downed power line and all that. This roadblock isn't just the body massage machine. He is Mr. Body Massage Machine. He sings that to himself on the video. So it's stupid. It's like not even a minute long little clip or whatever, but it's just kind of random and funny. So it's more of like an inside joke that got turned into a toy. So... But, yeah, I had no clue. He's also from Biloxi, Mississippi. That's where I was born as well. So, nice little fun fact about Roadblock there. And then Playmates put out their last Ronin figure. And so I was able to get that. And he comes with, like, all of the weapons here. So And he can hold all of them, too. So, see the bow's in there, the sword's in there, the sigh, and then he holds the nunchucks. And yeah, he scales pretty well with the other Playmates ones. Um, he has a bit more articulation. He's got like a, a slight one there. You can't really move the head because it's inside the hood here. But yeah, I'll be putting him next to my Retro Turtles. And then yeah, he's got the, the newer shoulder swivels as opposed to the old ones that just has the regular up and down on them. And then there's a few more like nunchucks, or not nunchucks, but uh, throwing stars. And then it's got a broken sword in there as well. But, yeah, it's pretty nice. And then there's kind of the setup summary of the last Ronin, which, as I've said already, if you haven't read it, go read it. I may do a read of it on the channel at some point. But it's definitely easily like one of the most must-read turtle things. But regular IDW is great too. But this is like this is gonna be, you know, a classic years from now even. Now we go on to box number two, and we have Captain America number six. This is the extreme variant. So he's got his leg pouches. So the premise currently is like Cap's shield was 
supposed to be designed to further some evil group's agenda. And then Cap used it for his own, and then somehow the Winter Soldier was involved with some sort of piece of safeguarding uh, that as well. And then it looks like him and Cap are at odds with each other currently. I'm not exactly sure why, but this has definitely been an improvement over recent Cap arcs. The art's pretty good. The story's interesting. I hate when they, you know, they try to smear Cap's legacy, though. That kind of seems to be a running thing with Marvel recently. Because, you know, who knows why. But that's just where they're at. Kind of the, just kind of current climate of things, I guess. So I'm assuming this is the climax to that arc, because a whole lot of explosions and stuff, as you saw. And then we have Evanescence, um, Echoes from the Void, I believe this is number three. And yeah, these are just fun. Beautiful, look at the art. I'm not an Evanescent super fan by any stretch, but as I've said, if um, you can blend music with art, I'm there. Like uh, Those are like my two favorite things. And then I think there's a backup in here too. So yeah. So King's Bond is my favorite Spawn comic currently. I love the direction the art is in, just kind of the darker feel. And I can't recommend it enough. The most epic stuff I feel is going on in this book. Spawn 335. I love that they've gone back to the retro logo. And so Spawn has been captured, it looks like, in this current one. His team has betrayed him. So yeah, so basically I just refer to them as like the Scorched or whatever. I think that's the name of the other series. That team has more or less like gathered together and betrayed him. And so that's what they've been dealing with. And kind of the ongoing. This is a cool shot here. Saturday morning Ninja Turtles number two with a much more 80s rendered version and so yeah this is just like lighthearted fun uh, in the vein of the cartoon from the 80s so yeah it's just fun to look at you know nice little piece of nostalgia here wish they would do the more simple simpler coloring though like the extra shadowing and stuff it really isn't needed i think we 
probably get spoiled with a lot of the coloring process. But yeah, I think it'd be better if they used just kind of the flatter tones. April needs some sleep here. There's bags under her eyes. Then we have Turtles 134 with the Eastman cover, of course. some really quality art in this one though. So yeah, the, these books are really where the meat of the, like kind of the current ongoing tensions in the book are with the turtles with the bandanas on their faces and stuff. at this point they still explained uh, why they're looking like that and then I got the cover I wanted for the punchline book from the previous haul so showed you the inside before already It's not too bad, but once again, so her thing right now, she's trying to like assemble the Royal Flush Gang again. And I think she's trying to do it like a, tor a turf war sort of situation. But yeah, I just love this cover, so I, I wanted this cover particularly. And then finally we have a nice little reprint of Robin's first appearance. The fun little bursting through the paper ring here. And yeah, this is just great, you know. A whole lot of random stories in here, but this, you know, this is how books were back in the day. So yeah, it looks like just the front is just where they add, you know, the actual Batman story and then the rest of everything is all just like detective stories and stuff. And then lots of classic mail away. The submarine, this thing was paper, put that in water, just gonna dissipate. But yeah, so that's it. Yeah, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you wanna see and as always, you all have a super slumber. Thanks.